material started. I have, first of all, the most important thing, better open my drink. I've got, uh, what do I call these things? Uh, I don't know, sparkling seltzer. Um, <laughs> and get a snack. And I have an apron on. I've got canvas and paints. And let me tell you what paint I have tonight. I have red, white, blue, yellow, brown, and black for the painting that we're doing tonight. Because we're going to be painting the Colorado flag, a uh, rustic version of it, which is always popular. So another thing I have are templates to help me uh, make the circles on the Colorado flag. So I have an extra paper plate and I am using a 16 by 20 canvas, which if you've been to the studio, you will be familiar with. It's kind of our standard size canvas. And um, the paper plate works really well as a template on that. And I have the tops from the ball jars that the bell jars that I use for water. Um, <laughs> it is ball, the company that makes the jars. And I have two jars full of water and that's just so I don't have to run back and forth and refill them. Uh, but one will do just fine. I also have a, you really only need a fan brush for this. Uh, the fan brush is, uh, has this stiff uh, horse hair bristle. Uh, that's the bristles on the brush. They're kind of stiffer than the average brush. Uh, but if you don't have that, you can just use a regular big one inch brush. This was a one inch flat. I don't know if you can see that. You can pull that up against the black. And then a medium, it's a half inch flat and a small round brush. So any variety will work for you. Um, mostly I'm gonna use the fan brush, the medium and the small. The, the big brush might come in handy if you do the background too, kind of up to you. So those are my supplies. And oh, and I also have a old t-shirt to blot my brushes on. And if you don't have an old t-shirt, a uh, paper towel will work or napkins from your last takeout order will also work. So we can get started in a couple minutes. Do you all have your supplies? You can, you can let me know. You can unmute yourself and let me know. You're all set. Yeah, we're set. Cool. I can see one of you have, has a cool background. We just ordered a green screen so we can do cool backgrounds around here. <laughs> what? All right. Yeah, you can actually um, just download a picture where it says stop video or start video. It says choose virtual background and you can put a background on like that. That's cool. We can, we can add bling to our Zoom. So tonight I'm going to paint the Colorado flag and I'm going to start actually with the background. So that's an apt conversation. Uh, we always work acrylic paint background and foreground. And don't worry, by the way, since you're working at home, if you didn't uh, get a kit from the studio and you're uh, using another kind of paint, uh, that's okay too. But I'm gonna work acrylic background and foreground because acrylic is layered. So I'm gonna start with the black background and I'm gonna use my fan brush. If you don't have a fan brush, you could also just use a big, the big one inch brush, your biggest one available. And I just dip that into the water jar let me move those closer so I'm not reaching so far. And I'm going to dip the fan brush into the black paint. So it's got water and black paint on it. And I'm just going to paint that whole background black. And keep in mind with acrylic, it's okay to use less paint than you probably think you need. Um, I think a lot of times people want to use more paint than is necessary. What we want to do is kind of put this background on in two layers. So I thin it down with water because it sounds counterintuitive, but the water will actually dry out of the paint really quickly and it'll dry pretty fast if it's put on in a thin down layer. So you can see on my painting here to start, it's really streaky, but that's because I put it on thin down with the water. So I'm just gonna get the whole thing with a layer of black on it and we'll get that background started. So you can keep dipping that brush into the paint and water is needed to just kind of cover the whole thing and then we'll let it dry. And I'm just going up and down with these brush strokes right now and back and forth. It really doesn't matter which direction you go in. So we just want a layer of paint on there. 
and we're gonna kind of adjust it anyway. So I'm just getting the paint to cover the whole thing to start. So you can, you can have fun with your brush strokes, make scritchy scratchy ones too. They can go in all different directions. And I am working upright on an easel, so I get a little bit of drips. It's okay to work laying this down on a table if you don't have an easel. There's no one right or wrong way to make art. You can use what you have at home. So now I have the whole thing covered with a thin layer of black paint, and I'm also going to pick that up off my easel here and I'm going to go around those edges too with black paint because I want to get the whole canvas finished even all the way around the edges so that I can hang that up and I won't even need a frame for it. It'll just look finished all the way around the, those edges. So we'll get that done and remember to do that bottom edge that is resting on the easel if you're using that or else just turn it all the way around and do all four sides. Just covering that all up. And by the way, I wear gloves because I get really painty and this is, you can see, this is why. <laughs> because when I pick it up, I get really painty. The paint is, you can wash it off with soap and water, it's not toxic. But uh, I don't like to get painty. So I wear gloves. I just wear those kind of gloves that come in those, you know, hair, hair dressing kits, latex gloves. So now I have paint all the way around those edges, except where my little fingerprints are. And I can let that dry for just a sec. Let's see. Got all of that covered. And if I'm gonna have to let that dry for a minute because if I keep working it and it's half dry, it'll start to pick up kind of funny textures from the paintbrush. So I have to relax. I'm gonna set that brush in the water. The reason why I put the brush in the water is because I don't want the paint to dry on the brushes. So I always leave them in the water jar when I'm working for the evening. And then at the end of the evening, I'll take them and clean them all off at the same time. Um, it's always a good idea to do that. We don't want to let acrylic paint dry on the brushes. And let me just let you know, because we're working uh, far afield, I'm not able to clean your brushes tonight. So let me tell you how to clean your brushes at the end of the evening. I always take the brush, put a little bit of liquid soap in the palm of my hand, and then scrub the brush around in the liquid soap, and then run it under the water until the water runs clear. And then I flatten out the brushes and kind of make them you know in their original shape i kind of run my fingers over them so that they come out flat and just rest them flat on the counter to dry and that'll keep your brushes nice and happy and then you'll have them for years and years so right now i'm going to leave it sitting in the water jar generally if you're going to work for hours and hours um, you might want to clean the brushes you stopped using you know get up and clean the brushes like maybe once an hour if you stop using certain ones because if you leave them in the water jar for a long, long period of time, it can loosen the glue that holds the metal ferrule onto the brush. And, um, and over time that can deteriorate the brushes. But uh, just for tonight, we're doing a short painting. It'll be just fine sitting in there and we don't want to let it dry. So what we do want to let dry is the paint that we put on the canvas. So right now we're doing the background of our rustic flag. And I just started with black paint with a little bit of water and I'm waiting for that to dry on my canvas. If you're super uh, in a hurry when you're doing painting, you can get a hairbrush and run it, or a hair, hair dryer and uh, run it over the painting and that'll also dry it. But uh, what I prefer to do is drink. So you can join me with that. Is anybody celebrating anything tonight? 
If you are, you can unmute it, unmute your Zoom and let me know. Otherwise, I will assume that your entire life is one big celebration, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so now we have to come up with a life as a celebration toast. I still forgot to print my toasts today. <laughs> my assistant is giving me the eye. I should have remembered that. Let's see. Well, here's one. To life, right? L'chaim. <laughs> that always works. Slansha, right? All right. And I got to wait for that to dry a little bit. Now, with this painting, the flag is pretty rustic, so one layer of paint might do because it's going to end up looking like kind of a wooden, uh, it's meant to kind of look like it's on a wooden surface. So I could paint it with another layer of paint and make it completely black, but I'm not even sure that's necessary because we're going to kind of make it look rustic anyway. The Colorado flag, always popular. We're lucky we have a simple, bold flag to work with, so that's really pretty cool. I have the um, jar lids from the water jars to work with as templates. If you don't have that, uh, any kind of little circle, circular thing will do. You can use uh, the, a cup as a template too for the inside of your Colorado sea there. You kind of want to, the inside's going to be about a third of the diameter of the outside of the sea. That's a rough guesstimate when you look for circle templates. I have a paper plate and those jar lids as, as mine. But it depends on the surface you're working on as well. I've seen people use smaller, uh, uh, canvases and then they just have little smaller jar lids. So just waiting for that to dry. Oh, while we're doing that, let me let you know at the studio, uh, we're not closed. Nancy is there during the day and we do have for sale these little um, masks. We have both the Monet inspired face masks that are uh, really nice kind of watercolory looking kind of tie dye inspired affairs. That's kind of cute and useful in these times. And then also I have the ones with the Sipping and Painting Hampton logo. I can show you what that one looks like. Super cute. Yay. You can do a little, little advertising for us, which we would love. And also, I mean, I just think they're adorable. So you can pick those up at the studio. And um, we also will have kits for whatever paintings that we have going on Zoom. We're doing Zoom classes right now, Thursday, Friday, Oh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we always have different teachers too. So it's it's been me today or yesterday and today, but my coworkers are joining in uh, Friday and Saturday. So there's always something new. You can look at our upcoming schedule for that. So now I have. Let's see. I always say there's a couple ways to tell if your painting is dry. One is to rub it on your friend. If they yell at you, it's still wet, right? But the other way is, if it looks glossy, then it's so wet. And mine's pretty glossy looking. I feel like I should like wave it around or something, but we'll just give it another, well, it looks like another couple minutes. Oftentimes at the studio we play music, but we can't do that on the online forum because of copyright issues. So you're just gonna have to hum amongst yourselves. And actually, oh, at the studio, we also, uh, we do have a patio there and we can do small events. We're um, technically allowed to have nine people or less uh, at an event, so we can do that. We have an outside space and that's like really a safe way to do it. Uh, and we also, I think we're allowed to have up to nine inside, but you can have little private events now, so that's pretty cool. You can let us know if you wanna schedule something. So I do have red 
white, blue, and yellow here, which are the colors of the cutoff bag. I also have a brown uh, so that we can kind of make this look a little bit wood texture. So there's, there's that added color. But the next thing I'm gonna do is work on those blue stripes. So my blue, it's technically called a phalo blue. It's like, you, you've of course seen the color flag, that bright, you know, dark blue that they have on the color flag that represents the sky. I'm gonna stick with that fan brush and you can always use a big brush if uh, you don't have a fan brush. The reason why I like this is because the stiff bristles, uh, they kind of, I don't know if you can see that there, they're kind of um, rough along the edges. So they give a rough texture, which will mimic the grain of wood. But if you don't have that, you can use a big brush. I would caution you to use very little paint on it though, because uh, you would kind of want to use what we call a dry brush technique. So you want to put the paint on the brush and then rub most of it off on your paper towel or your shirt. And then you can kind of dry brush using a very light touch and very little paint. You can brush it over the surface with a big uh, brush if you just have a regular nylon brush. But this one is this boar's hair bristle, which is uh, stiffer bristles. So I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna start with the blue paint. I'm just dipping the tips of the bristles of that fan brush into the blue paint. And I'm actually gonna wipe most of that off on the edge of the plate, or you can wipe it off on your paper towel or little shirt there. And then you can just brush that gently over the surface. Oh, and that's so dark. I'm gonna add just a little bit of white. I'm gonna mix up, I, it went on so dark there that I'm gonna add a little bit of white and make a little bit lighter blue so that it shows up as blue against my black background there. So just mixing a tiny bit of white with my blue paint. And again, very little paint on the brush. I'm gonna wipe most of that paint off on the paper towel. And then just drag that very lightly over the surface on the top third of the color of flag there on the top third of the canvas. Because we just want to get those blue stripes top and bottom like our lovely state flag and that blue represents the sky if you are using a bigger brush you can also turn it horizontally and apply the paint in thin stripes so that you don't cover totally over the black background we want that black to kind of show through and don't despair if it doesn't show through right now if you've already mowed over it it's okay the great thing about acrylic is it's always adjustable and you can go back in with the black and put stripes of that back in there too if you kind of lost that in the background. So you can always kind of rebalance it if needed. Yeah, I have a question. Uh-huh. When, um, after you get a little bit of that on, would you mind putting it close to the camera? So, because there's a little bit of glare on the um, canvas. Yeah. And you can kind of see what that stroke looks like. And red line. That was my next. That was my next thing. Let me hold that up so you can see that. It is so subtle there. There's a little bit of blue over my black. I could add a little more white to the paint, which I think I'll do for the purpose of this zoom, so you can see it a little bit better. We uh, we want to be able to see it to paint it, and uh, I'll I'll remain a little less faithful to the original colors of the Colorado flag. So let's mix a little more white. Well, you don't have to, but I'm going to do that. Mix a little more white with the blue, and then. Hopefully that will show up on camera. See, I have my loyal assistants to let me know. I was thinking earlier that doing Zoom, it's like I'm Bob Ross, but like a lot less mellow than him. I still can't get over the fact you said, wipe it on your shirt. Well, no, the, my, <laughs> not your shirt, my, my extra shirt. <laughs> this is an old t-shirt. Some, some, you know, just old rag that I have around. When I'm working at home, I use uh, materials that are recyclable, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle, that sort of, that sort of thing. But you can use paper towels as well. I'm sure you have had a lot of takeout orders recently, and you probably have a lot of extra uh, napkins sitting around. So let me hold that up again. I put 
through the lighter blue, so hopefully you'll be able to see that better. And I went across horizontally with the brush strokes, but I didn't try to make them really neat. I kind of, my hand is like wave, little wavy up and down. So the brush strokes are really uneven and that kind of adds to the wood grain look, I think. So it's even better if it's not perfect. And you can see like the result of that, it gives it, it makes, almost makes it look like they're kind of knots in the wood when you do that. So a little bit of white mixed with the blue over my black background and now, Instead of doing the bottom, I'm just going to flip it over because it's just easier for me to reach the top. It's totally up to you. If you're working on a table, you might not need to do that, but I'm going to flip that over so I can do that top third once again. So just sticking with that white and blue paint together. On the fan brush and brushing it lightly over that surface to get that wood texture. And you can either hold the brush flat and kind of get little wavy stripes that way, or you can hold it uh, lengthwise and use the texture of the brush. You can experiment and see what's good for you. Sometimes, like I just dip the brush in the water, you might need to rebalance the amount of water with the paint. Sometimes it gets really dry, and then I kind of, let me show you, it picks up the texture of the canvas if it's really dry, and the paint doesn't flow as nicely. So I want to add a little bit of water to the paint to get it to have a little more flow. So I'll get more of a smoothed out blue. That's what that looks like with a little bit more water in it. You always want the paint to flow for you. You don't want it to fight with you. We want to have a fun, pleasant, happy painting experience. I don't want to feel like I'm working against that paint. I want it to work with me. And I'm going down about a third of the way from the top so that I get blue, black, blue right now. We're going to add the white for that center stripe next, of course. We're getting those two blue stripes in there that represent our lovely Colorado blue sky. And it's okay also if your paint is not mixed really neatly, like I can put some stripes of darker blue paint in there, or if I feel like I totally lost the black, I can add some black back in there as well and get it all kind of mixed together just so it has that rustic textured look. That's what it looks like it goes all together. And Sometimes when you go between colors, make sure you clean off that brush, swish it around really well in the water jar and blot it on the paper towel and get your brushes really clean. And then you can go back to the other colors that you're using. So just getting that blue and black in there and I, I skipped around to the bottom. I was adding a little bit of darker blue in there because I have so much light blue. Just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. For our rustic Colorado flag. So now I have, let me hold that up so you can see it, blue top and bottom. I'm getting a little bit of uh, sunlight in here. So you can see, I think it's just as bright one side as the other, but it's shining on the bottom a little bit more in my studio here. And once I have that on there, I can add that center white stripe as well. Now make sure when you move to the white paint, you clean off that brush that you're using really well by swishing around in the water jar for maybe 20 seconds and then blot it on the paper towel to get it real clean. I always need to get a clean brush when I go between colors. So once I get that brush nice and clean, I'm just dipping the tips of the bristles into the white paint. And you can drag that up along the edge of the palette or plate in this case that I'm using and make sure the brush is, uh, has very little paint on it. And here again, 
brush that right across so that you get that rustic wood texture look. And that's how that looks with very little paint on that fan brush. Especially if you're using a nylon brush, very little paint. You can hold that brush horizontally and make thin little um, uh, grains of wood, thin little brush strokes using a nylon brush as well. So hold that flat. I do want to make sure that I get a fair amount of white on there because I want my little Colorado logo to show up against that background. So I'm just getting them on there. Oh, they got a little blue on that. What we call that is a happy little accident. It's okay if it gets other colors in it. I kind of like that actually because I was actually looking at that in the painting I have here in the house this morning. When, when you're looking at a, the painting as a whole, when you step back from it taken in as a whole, um, oftentimes it's nice when your eye sees the same color in different parts of the canvas. So I have a really bright colored painting downstairs and the artist, um, you know, he would use purple, 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 like and magenta, magenta, all over kind of, let's say in a triangular pattern over the surface of the canvas. You kind of want to skip around. So it's okay to, with, to me that I have a little blue in the middle because I think it draws your eye from the blue areas. I kind of think that's nice. I'm going to leave it. That's why there's no right and wrong in art. We have happy little accidents. Now, right now, I'm going side to side and end to end from one side of the canvas to the other. Uh, we can also come back in on the sides if you wanted to kind of, uh, kind of make it look like it's um, kind of a fade in from the sides. You can come back with black from those edges. That's kind of an option as well. Maybe I'll do that a little bit and show you how that will look. But I'm just getting that white on there to start. Let me hold that up so you can see that a little bit closer. That's how that looks. And you can see I've gone totally to the edge of the canvas with that. But you have other options if you wanted to kind of do a fade. Is that what's called an Instagram? When they do, you know, that fade look? My my assistant is questioning my sanity at this point, I think. <laughs> you can come in and press the brush to the canvas at the edge and lift it up and off to get that black to kind of fade in on the edges too. So that's an option as well. That's how that looks. I pressed the brush to the canvas on the edge and lifted it up as I swept the bristles in towards the center. So you can you can do that on the edges as well. And I'm going around those edges where I had my fingerprints earlier, fixing those up too. Because I want it all nice and neat around the edges there. So that I can just hang it up over the fireplace tonight. Stick it up. And it'll look all finished. So I'm lifting that up off the easel and finishing those edges. And get that all, all done on the edge. All right. So now you want to make sure as you're working that you step back from your work and take the whole thing in and make sure that it's shaping up the way you like. So stand back from it. Remember that as the artist, you're sitting about a foot and a half from the work, but the viewer is gonna be relaxing many feet back on your couch with their drink, gazing from a distance at your lovely painting. So you need to step back from it and look at it like the viewer will look at it as well. So 
this is a good time to grab your drink and take a look at it. What flavor do I have here? Cranberry lime. Cranberry lime. Who comes up with these things? <laughs> Seems like a strange flavor. I get those multi packs, so you never know what you're gonna get. It's like, it's like I don't know Skittles, right? Like, <laughs> they come in different flavors. I think that I want to put just a little more blue on some of mine. You'll all have to decide what kind of adjustments you need to yours. You can show me if you want to. You can hold them up to the camera and show me. See what you're working on. Oh, look at that. Very nice. That is coming along well. Ooh, good, good, good. Well, you got littler canvases there. So I hope you have littler templates too. You guys are doing a great job. We're actually using wood for our canvas. Oh, you came up with the actual wood, cool. Did you make those or were you able to buy them somewhere? Yeah, I just broke down pallets and made them. Cool. Well, that saves the Kind of step. What I'm doing here right now is I was kind of scrubbing back and forth with the brush to add even a little more texture. Kind of experimenting with that. That's how that looks close up. I got got a lot of texture going in that between the, the blue, blue, white, and the black background. And actually, some of my white dried a little light. It's funny when it dries, it's, it almost dries a little see through. So I'm going to add a little more white too to that center part because I want that to pop out. And just adding a little more water to my paint to smooth that out too. Kind of. It's always kind of a balance, adding a little black in, a little white, keep rebalancing it. But I clean the brush between every color and just using very little paint on the brush to keep wiping it down on those, on my paper towel. It's funny, I can hear my husband's upstairs. He's on his, his own Zoom call. They're, they're playing a game on Zoom. It's a Zoom world. I'm brightening up some of that blue with a little more white. And then coming along in those edges and pressing the brush to the canvas and lifting it up as I sweep in because I want that the edges to kind of fade in from the black. So doing that as well. And sometimes I'm turning the brush horizontally and make some of those brush strokes longer so that it looks uh, a little bit uh, rough that edge. Not I don't want to get a regular pattern going. I want it to be kind of a Kind of a zigzag, but but not a regular pattern. I just make some of the brush strokes just sort of random longer to get that fade to look natural. And then we can put our Colorado Sea on here. I just want to make sure it's just so, and then we'll get our logo going. I always tell people. Just be glad you didn't come from Maryland because it'd be really hard to do their flag. Oh, and by the way, this painting that I'm making here today, it is gonna go up for sale at Sipping and Painting Hampton. I'm gonna deliver them into the studio and then you can always uh, buy the original. You can own an original work of art or give it as a gift. 
they are a bargain and uh, and we do put all the ones that we do for our classes zoom and live up for sale so you can come into the studio and take a look at those we have it's nice in the summertime we have the doors open and it's nice and breezy in there and so safe to come in and take a look at those masks and buy some original art and uh, it'll give you a little bit of an outing that's nice all right so there's my there's my blue white and and blue again over my background so the blue represents the blue skies of Colorado the white the snow and uh, just because it's rustic we have it on black today but that's not the only color I did also have that brown on my palettes because I wanted to give just a hint of a wooden look to it so I'm going to add just a few uh, short dashes or maybe I should say long dashes of brown throughout the canvas to make that uh, wooden look so here again using that fan brush and very little paint on the tips of the bristles. Just loading that up on the tips of the bristles, my fan brush, and then wiping it off on the edge of the plate. I'm gonna add some long dashes holding the brush flat horizontally and just go across here and there and add just a hint of brown. And let me hold that up so you can see that real close. Just a little hint of that so that it looks like it was painted on wood. And try to make those, uh, don't make them a regular pattern. Make some close together, some far apart, some of the dashes longer than others and some shorter. We, and it's okay if your hand shakes and they're a little wavy and up and down. We just want to kind of randomize it a little bit. Though they are all horizontal, but they, we just want to make them a little bit random. You can even make long uh, oval to make it look like a knot in the wood. Or make like an eye shape, an almond shape. That's that's what I did there. Make a look like a little knot in our in our fake wood. And that's with brown paint on my fan brush, and I'm doing that all over the canvas to give it a hint of a wood background. There we go. Let me hold that up so you can see it real close. That's kind of a funny brown. I feel like my brown has a lot of green in it. If if you want, you can mix yours. I don't know how your brown looks. You can mix it with a little orange to brighten it up, but I'm going to commit to that because that's the kind I already had on my palette. And here again, if you find that maybe you've added too much, you can always rebalance that with the original colors that you had there. I think I'm gonna add a little white here. I got I got a little over enthusiastic in the middle there. So I'm gonna just come back over that with a little white, and knock that back. And you can go over those edges too. And I'm sweeping my hand across and kind of lifting it up and off on either side of that brush stroke so that I get it, it to fade out each brush stroke also. My son and I were talking about what Bob Ross, you know, talks about uh, when he paints. And I thought, I need to get a little pet squirrel. They keep running the clock across the back patio. Maybe I can snag one of them. We do also teach the Bob Ross classes. If you've been to the studio, you know that we have a Bob Ross cardboard cutout because our or Nancy teaches the Bob Ross classes, and I believe that we're going to be doing those on Zoom. Is that right, Nancy? Nancy is taking breaks, um, but yes, we do uh, Bob Ross classes on Zoom. Um, Nancy is trained um, from the Bob Ross School. Uh, where is that? In Florida? In Florida. I think it's in Jacksonville. And she teaches those classes. They're a little longer, aren't they? They are. 
uh, although on Zoom, I don't know, it might be keeping it short, but I think she's going to have kits available and then you can come get the oil paints. And that is super cool because oil paint is a really nice medium to work with. So try that out if you haven't done it before. Look on our upcoming schedule, see if those are on there. All right. So hopefully you've got your flag looking rustic. You can always show me on Zoom if you like. Put that up so you can see mine. Right now everybody's incognito. You can just oh, accept our accept our sample painting from the studio. But you can always show me what you're working on. Oh, that's nice. Got the wine going. Last night I had a Cabernet, but my husband finished it up. <laughs> so I get the sparkling seltzer tonight. All right, we'll let that dry and then we'll put our Colorado seat on there. So when I'm in the studio, I always ask my favorite trivia question, what is the study of flags? called because nobody knows this because it's so obscure but it's called vexillology so you can all become vexillologists after this and you'll be experts on the Colorado flag. Let's see we've got uh, I've got my templates ready to go. You don't strictly have to have them you can freehand the C but it might make it a little easier if you have circles. Just make sure that your larger circle is about uh, three times as big as the smaller one so that we're faithful to the uh, shape of that Colorado Sea logo. So and um, if you haven't done the Colorado flag with us at the studio you may want to follow me step by step on this. I know it looks pretty easy and you could always get ahead but uh, we've done it so many times that I can tell you I've screwed it up so that you don't have to. Um, we, we figured out how to do this just so so if you want to do this step by step. I will do that in just a minute. Let's see. Did I tell all the information I need to about what's going on these days? Let me think of anything I missed. I cannot remember. We have kits in the studio. We do. We have kits for sale. Oh, and I, I didn't tell you, you could hit up my Venmo. It's at Ernstine Arts. I think I put that up on my on one of the little squares on on Zoom there. But that's and I my just dropped it in the chat. Oh, okay, and my my lovely assistant dropped that in the chat, so you can check that out too at Ernstine Arts. My Venmo, if you want to pretend you're at the studio and uh, drop a little tip in the uh, virtual jar, that's, a, that's an option for you. Always appreciated. So now we can put our Colorado C on there, and let's see. I'm going to start with my plate. And I'm going to hold the plate up uh, towards the canvas. I want to make sure it's uh, centered top to bottom. And I give a couple inches or maybe three fingers width from the left side of my canvas and hold that plate up there. And I'm going to use my little skinny brush. Anytime I start using a new brush, I just wet it in the water jar and blot it on my paper towel to get the extra water off. So we get that brush started. But I'm going to use red paint and just go around the edge of that plate. Oh, and I didn't even mention, before you do that, you can uh, make yourself a couple little marks on that plate that are about hands width apart. And that'll give you the opening of that C. That'll give you uh, kind of a little marks to shoot for. So they're about a hands width apart on my standard size paper plate here. And that's where I'm going to place those off to the right hand side where the opening of that Colorado C is. And then you can go dot to dot around the end of that plate with a little skinny brush and some red paint so that you get the placement of our Colorado red C there. And I guess the red is for what, the red rocks or something? The red mountains? The red, no. What is that for? Mountains purple. The yeah, mountains are purple. <laughs> I guess it's well in Colorado means color red so there must be some red rock somewhere on the western part of the state on the western slope. One of our teachers from the western slope will have to ask. So it should look like this. Let me hold that up to the 
camera so you can see when it's done. You just want to go around the edge from dot to dot, leaving the opening of that C on the right hand side. I always say if you go all the way around the plate, I'll know you've been drinking too much. So don't make it a full circle. You just want to make it like the letter C. And we just want to have that outline in there for now. We'll come back to coloring it in in just a minute. But right now, we just want the outline around the edge of the plate. And I did hold that up uh, centered from top to bottom and a few fingers width from the left side of the canvas coming inside with that Colorado C. So I'll let you catch up to me with that. When we are in the studio, we often do different Colorado flags. We have some with city skylines and um, some lakes and mountains and uh, always popular to kind of vary it. But um, if we found that if you start with the center and then you try to do the outside, the outside is kind of um, off kilter. So that's why we start with the outside edge. That way we'll know exactly where the center is when we put that yellow uh, sunshine in the center of our Colorado Sea. And actually the Colorado flag is not even that old. I think it was, uh, 1966 or something. It's it's a very young state flag. It was adapted as our state flag pretty recently, which is why it's you know so looks so modern because it is. All right. So hopefully you have that C started. And once you have that outline, you'll know where to hold up your center uh, circle for the for that middle yellow part. And I'm gonna use the jar lid from one of these mason jars uh, for the center, but I'm gonna go around the outside edge with that. So here again, I cleaned off the little skinny brush in the water jar, and I'm blotting that on the paper towel or t-shirt, whatever you got. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of white in with my yellow, because if I use just the pure yellow in my acrylic, the yellow is really see-through by itself. The white acts as kind of a primer and makes that yellow less see-through. So that's kind of a trick I use with the acrylic paint. So I mixed yellow and white together on the plate there with my little skinny brush. And now I'm gonna hold up that jar lid and I'm gonna go around the outside edge. Just make sure you get that jar lid right in the middle there. And then you can go around that outside edge to get that circle. And you don't have to be real perfect about this because it's a rustic uh, version of the flag. So it's okay if you know your brush strokes are not perfectly smooth. That's the nice part about this painting. Once you have that outline in there, let me show you what that looks like. I'm just painting that outline in with the yellow mixed with white in that center. And I'm just using that little skinny brush because that's what I had in my hand. You can go in any direction with those brush strokes as well. Just kind of getting that yellow paint in there. Is that Looks yellow like or a, orange? This is yellow. Does it's it look yellow. orange? Though? On the picture, your your oh, yours looks yellow, but the picture on your uh, board, the example, has orange in it. Oh, that's funny. I think I don't. Oh. <laughs> You never know as it comes across on the computer. But you know, you, you see variations on the flag all the time. So, you know, it's your world. You can, you can always vary it up. I guess it's yellow on our flag because of the sunshine. So that is why I'm using yellow today. And mine is, uh, my paint is really going on streaky here, which I like for this rustic version. Like you can see the, background beneath it and it's kind of streaky. Let me hold that up and you'll see it. But that works really well for this rustic Colorado flag. So I don't even need to make that very neat. I like that messy like see-through look that it has in it. I guess it's probably the lighting in here maybe that makes it look a little more orange but it's actually pretty bright yellow. I need to get it. Let me see if I can turn up the lights. Maybe I turn them down. Hang on. 
that's as bright as it gets. I guess I'll have to get a spotlight in here. But yeah, the mixing a little bit of white paint with that yellow will also brighten it up. So if you want a real pop on that, you can mix a little bit more white paint with the yellow or start with white and then mix yellow into it. You always start with the lighter color when you mix in with acrylic. Because the darker colors, they want to take over. All right, let's catch up with me on that in just a minute. I'm just squishing my brushes around, keeping them neat. And you can always hold on to these templates for when you join us for a different Colorado flag painting too. I just keep those around the studio. I always keep these jar lids because you never know when they'll come in handy. Actually, lately I've seen all kinds of interesting upcycled art. <laughs> in fact, I gave um, my son a uh, upcycled glasses holder made out of old forks. He said he put it on social media to ask his friends what to name it. It looks like a little person in the made out of forks. So, upcycled. That goes with that whole reduce, reuse, recycle kind of ethic. So now I have my yellow sunshine in there, but we gotta get that red C going around it. So I'm gonna switch, well, in this case, I'm gonna use my medium sized brush because I like the amount of hand control I get with that medium size. This is about a half inch brush. Let's see, pull that up against the darkness so you can see it. It's a half inch brush, we'll wet that off, get it nice and flat, and it's cut straight across at the top. And I find that that's helpful because it, if I go up along the edges of that C, I can get a nice uh, kind of clean edge. So I'm gonna use that. And here again, with the acrylic paint, since we have this real textured dark background in here, if I mix a little bit of white paint in with the red, it'll give that red more coverage. Now this, uh, it depends probably on your individual brand of paint and everything. You don't wanna make it pink, so it's just a little bit of white, but I find that adding a little bit of white to the paint makes it cover better. It acts as a primer. So you can mix that around on the plate with the medium sized brush that's a half inch flat and mixing it all around, getting that loaded up on that medium sized brush. And then you can fill that in on your Colorado C. And when I get to these edges, I can just, just touch that edge. I'm, uh, wiping the brush back and forth with these little short brush strokes and just touching that edge so I get a nice neat edge to that. You can come in and smooth the center paint later, but if you just touch that uh, outline that you made before real gently, you'll get a nice straight edge when you paint in the Colorado Sea. And the same goes for the edge along the yellow as well. You can turn your hand around and just go back and forth with little short strokes and just touch that real carefully and then you won't overlap that yellow that you have there already. We just want the red to just touch there. Just go real slow when you come along those edges. I like to use the front of the brush a little bit better. Now make sure you leave that uh, opening of the C kind of at a 45 degree angle. That's also where the little flat brush comes in handy, but make sure even if you're using a little skinny round brush, you make yourself a, an outline that's at a 45 degree angle at the opening of the C, and you can get that characteristic Colorado C shape. Just imagine that those two uh, lines meet at a point in the center of that yellow. That's how I got the angle for those the opening of the Colorado Sea. It's almost like Pac-Man has half swallowed that yellow ball. It's like a piece of pie cut out, about a, about a fifth of that pie is cut out in the middle to get that characteristic Colorado Sea. 
and just filling that in with red paint mixed with a little bit of white. Just be careful to go slow when you come up along those edges. I'm just waving that brush back and forth and just touching those, just touching that outline so that it stays nice and neat. And here again, it doesn't matter if the paint is real neat in the middle because it's rustic and you can always take advantage of that texture to keep that rustic look. I am keeping those brush strokes horizontal now that I have the paint on there. I'm going over it horizontal just so it's consistent with the brush strokes I had underneath. But it's totally up to you how you want the texture on your red Colorado C to go there. I've seen all kinds of different variations on this. I, we love creativity at Sipping and Painting Hampton. Even though we're all painting the same thing, it doesn't all have to look the same. You do you. It always reminds me there was a far side cartoon with penguins and one penguin is jumping up out of the crowd going, I just gotta be me. So that's what always reminds me of. That's how we paint at Sipping and Painting Hampton. You just gotta be you. Now I have that red all filled in there. I just want to straighten up that edge along with the front of the C. And then I can go back and make all those brush strokes horizontal. And when I do that, it picks up a little of the paint and I can see the background beneath it, which is nice because it keeps that rustic look. Let me hold that up so you can see that better. It's, it's a little bit see-through and that's working for me. Get that centered in on my camera. So that's fun. Now, interestingly, uh, Nancy told me that this is not the spattered one, but then I see that she posted the spattered version on the sample there. So I feel beholden to let you know how to do that, even though my uh, original for tonight is not that way. This is actually pretty much completed for what we were doing, although I'm going to put some finishing touches on it. But let me tell you, if you do want to spatter, um, there's ways to do that without completely uh, spattering your world. And <laughs> since you're doing this, this at home, I don't know how messy you like to get, but I'm actually a pretty neat artist, so I like to control it. And this is how you do that. If you want to get um, spatters on it, of course, you can always go outside. That's a one way to keep your world neat. Do it on the yard and then um, mix water with the paint so that it's the texture or the consistency of skim milk. So you wanna take, let's say you wanna spatter it in white. You wanna put water on the brush and mix it around on the plate until it's the consistency of skim milk. Just kind of mix that around. And then you'd hold up the brush you need a stiff bristle brush for that. So this, this would kind of be better if you had one of these boar's hair bristle brush brushes. We want to have real stiff bristles on it because it helps to fling the paint. You can also use a toothbrush because those have nice stiff bristles. But whichever brush you use, you'd want to hold it really close to the canvas and then draw your, load it up with the paint that's thinned down with water so that it's the consistency of skim milk. Hold it near the canvas and then draw your finger towards yourself, not towards the canvas, towards yourself because then the paint will fling back at the canvas and you'll keep it neat. You don't want to fling it onto your shoes. I've ruined many a pair of shoes that way. So that's one way to do it. You can, of course, put it down on the backyard and also kind of whip the brush towards the painting. That definitely has its pluses. It's uh, a lot of fun to do. And then maybe you get those long strings and that looks really cool. It looks like an explosion of paint. So that's always an option, but, um, do that outside if you choose to. If you want to do it inside, 
this method is a little bit neater. You can just hold it up near the painting and get those little splatters on it. I'm going to leave them off mine because my sample is not that way, but I wanted to make sure I told you that because I see that the one posted on the Zoom has the splatters. So that is how you accomplish that. So you get to clean that brush. But you want to make sure you step back from your work and you're happy with it. I'm going to add just a little bit more black along the edges to give it a little more fade in before I decide that I am totally done. Just a little more black here and there, top and bottom, because I feel like that'll give my flag a little bit of pop. And I came in a little bit further with some of that black and left it real close to the edge on other parts of it. I'll hold that up so you can see that just to get that fade in look. Let's see if we, we can see that. I'll kind of rock it back and forth. I like that. Looks like my sample. And we got the Colorado flag here all rustic. So I want to see what you're doing. And hopefully we can get everybody to hold theirs up if you're, I don't know how much we're all on the same step, but if you're finishing up, I'd like to get everybody to hold them up so I can see what you're doing and that we could get a group picture too. I will say that at the studio, we always have you sign your paintings and we do have paint pens for that. You can also use a little skinny brush. I always put my initials in the corner and you wanna make sure you sign your painting when you're done as well. I gotta get paint pens here. I don't have any handy. I'm gonna use my little skinny brush today. Just initial it here. So that everybody knows who did the work of art. Get that going. And also, um, sometimes when the paint dries, it dries a little see-through, you can also bump up the brightness of that uh, yellow if you find that it dried a little see-through. Sometimes that happens. That's one thing you want to check for before you decide you're done with your painting. I think I'll just add a little bit more white mixed with the yellow and just add touches of that to brighten it up. Just a couple little short brush strokes in there to get that old pop. There we go. Got to make it look like a proper fried egg. I, I don't know if that's what the uh, designer of the flag had in mind, but that's always what it reminds me of. There you go. Now hopefully that looks a little less orange now that I brighten that up. All right. gonna fix I saw when I held that up I missed, I missed the edge here put that in as well just got it now you can see the perfectionists come out when the when you're deciding you're done But don't overwork the paint too. If it's wet and it's thick and you overwork acrylic, then it'll pick up the brush stroke. So you want to wait for it to dry if you want to um, fix some of those layers too. So that is my Colorado flag. Let's see yours. What are you guys up to? Show me your paintings. Ooh, look at that. Very nice. Ooh, you did the splatters too. Cool. Oh. Cool, look at those. You did a smaller version and you got that see perfectly. You must have good templates. Oh, let me see yours too. There's, you gotta move one over so I can see the other one. Very nice. If you all put your uh, canvases up to the camera, we can take a quick picture. Yeah, you can take your group shot. You wanna hold them up? Take a zoom shot. Ooh, look at that. You got splatters too, very nice. Good job. Good job, artist. Beautiful. 
You guys did a great job. That is so cool. So I'm glad you joined us to Zoom tonight. And we are doing free classes on Zoom all throughout June. So you can check our upcoming schedule and do all kinds of different things. And even maybe learn the Bob Ross technique. So check for that. Do come in the studio and pick up uh, kits as needed. We do have those for sale. And we also have those little um, face masks too. And if you want to schedule a little private event, we can do little events out in front of the studio. Oh, look at that. Very nice. Another one. Cool. And uh, we're so glad you joined us tonight. You can always hit up my Venmo at Ernstein Arts. That's also on one of the little Zoom squares. And we appreciate you joining tonight, joining us tonight at Sipping and Painting Hampton. So thank you. Forgive me, does it come up as Cynthia? Pardon? Does your Venmo come up as Cynthia? Ernstein? No, it's uh, Ernstine Arts. Okay, so I clicked that and then it came up as Cynthia. So I might have the wrong one. Yeah. Yeah, I just, he is my nickname. I just, you know, I had to get rid of all the sin. Mama thinks that her name is old fashioned. Yeah. But I disagree. I think it's classy. Nah. But I, I had to I had to go for the modern version. Yeah. What's her name? Sin. So yeah, and you can check out at Ernstine Arts is also my website. So you can see my other art too if you like to check it out. I do other things when I'm not doing these acrylic paintings and all kinds of fun things on my website. But thank you for joining me tonight and painting acrylic with me. Fun. It was a pleasure. Definitely going to do that. I've always uh -huh. wanted to go to one of these classes and never have. Oh, and make sure you clean those brushes off. Got to do the drinking and the brush cleaning tonight. Maybe she wants some. And sorry, you said, um, I think mine's coming up as Cynthia Ernstein as well. So, it's, but the username is Ernstein Arts. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I think um, Vanessa and Katie will be in this weekend, so you can take classes with them too. <laughs>